Good afternoon, uh, everybody. I'm uh, very happy to be here with you, and I would uh, especially thank Nada for a warm uh, welcome. Uh, today, I will talk about the differential diagnosis of pancreatic lesions. Let's start with a little bit of background. Pancreatic lesions are solid and cystic lesions. They are increasing. In Western countries, the incidence of adenocarcinoma increases by 3% each year, and we estimate between 2 to 45% of the general population will have a cystic pancreatic lesion during the lifetime. It is due to the improvement of imaging detection and the aging population. The main goal in managing pancreatic lesion is to identify those at risk of cancer for early treatment while avoiding over-treatment uh, of benign lesions. When we discover the solid le pancreatic lesion, patients may present some symptoms such as weight loss, abdominal pain, acute pancreatitis sometimes, jaundice, diabetes mellitus. CT scan is often the first imaging performed. It shows you an heterogeneous nodular lesion, more or less a dilated pancreatic duct or a dilated common bile duct, in particular if the lesion is located in, on the head of the pancreas. In blood, uh, we may have an elevated CA199 and IgG4, but we have to keep in mind they are not perfectly reliable tests. Discovering a solid lesion does not necessarily mean adenocarcinoma. In several studies, uh, it has been shown uh, the solid lesion will be an adenocarcinoma between 55 to 70 percent of cases. In one third of cases, it would be another thing, inflammatory lesion, neuroendocrine tumor, or maybe a metastasis. That's why we need to perform some exams, CT scan if it has not uh, uh, been already uh, done, MRI and EUS and sometimes biopsy. Uh, this picture show you uh, the same lesion, the nodular lesion responsible for um, dilated common bile duct and uh, dilated uh, pancreatic duct there on the MRI and in the US picture. We can study the vascular um, structure thanks to the Doppler and perform a biopsy if necessary. Most often patients are referred after the incidental discovery of an asymptomatic cystic pancreatic lesion. Uh, this is due to the improvement of imaging. Uh, the prevalence in general population um, is around uh, 55 for having a cyst during the lifetime. And thanks to the improvement in imaging, we detect uh, most of those uh, lesions. Age is another uh, important factor. The older the patient, the higher the risk uh, to discover a cyst, in particular after 50 years old. This chart shows you the distribution of the cyst. Uh, in fact, in 20% of cases, it would be a uh, false cyst, uh, mainly a pseudo cyst or a dystrophic cyst. So, in this situation, the medical history of the patient will be crucial to have an accurate diagnosis. And in 80% of cases, it will be a true cyst, mainly IPMN, intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. Uh, which is a benign lesion, but if uh, the main pancreatic duct is involved, the risk of malignancy exceeds 50%. It can be also serous cyst. Uh, this is a benign lesion and uh, remains so. And in the middle, we have other lesions, mucinous cyst, neuroendocrine tumor, or so, uh, solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm uh, with um, intermediate risk. I will develop those types uh, later. At this stage of the management, we have to wonder whether continue investigations because uh, the follow-up may be uh, quite long and responsible for anxiety for the patients. The treatment is surgery, which carries a risk of 30% risk of complication and 2% risk of mortality. So we have to give the patients information about the risk and the benefits. And finally, uh, the follow-up uh, should be only reserved for patients fit for surgery. What are the diagnostic tools? In blood, there is uh, currently no available uh, blood test for clinical practice. 
imaging is uh, much useful. Uh, CT scan without contrast show uh, uh, calcification very well, but the accuracy for cystic pancreatic lesion is uh, uh, not perfect. That's why we uh, the CT scan is better for suspected cancer, tumor staging, or suspected current disease. MRI is more accurate for cystic lesions in the pancreas. It, able, it is able to detect communication very well with the main pancreatic duct and to identify neural nodules, um, as you can see in this example. And it's very um, interesting for the patient uh, to avoid radiation exposure. EUS is another diagnostic tool. Um, he has a very good special resolution. He can identify uh, communication with the main pancreatic duct very well. Uh, with the contrast, we can see uh, the mural nodules uh, very well with an accuracy around at 98%. EUS is um, also better than CT scan to diagnose cancer. The main limits are the cost and the need for general anesthesia. If necessary, thanks to the EUS, we can perform a biopsy. Oops, sorry. A biopsy to take some cyst fluid and perform measurement. Uh, DNA markers are promising but not available for clinical practice. Otherwise, we can uh, um, test CEA and glucose, um, and the measurement allows you to differentiate mucinous from non mucinous lesions. Let's see uh, the main types. The, the introductory papillary mucinous neoplasm represents 70% 70, 70 of the pancreatic cyst. They affect uh, male and female equally. They are mainly located on the head or the neck of the pancreas. The, the, the main type is the branch duct IPMN, as you can see on this MRI or EUS picture. Sometimes the main pancreatic duct is involved uh, as either segmental or a global dilation of the, of the duct. And in this situation, we can observe a very specific uh, uh, aspect of the papilla, the, papula, the papulous papillary. Papulous papillary sorry. Uh, in histology, this is a mucinous uh, lesion with a risk of malignancy around 40% if the main pancreatic duct is involved after five years of progression and 100% of um, malignancy after 15 years of progression. When this is the branch duct um, involved, uh, the risk of malignancy is low, but it's not zero. The risk of cancer comes from the IPMN, of course, but also from the panin lesion. This is a pancreatic intraepithelial uh, premalignant lesion developed on the small duct of the pancreas. So this is crucial uh, during the follow-up to examine always the entire pancreatic gland to detect uh, both types of cancer. This uh, chart uh, show you, shows you uh, how to manage IPMN. Um, it is available in a, the review gut uh, 2018. Uh, just remind you, we don't uh, follow the patient uh, who are not uh, fit for surgery. And the decision to monitor or to treat the patient are ba is based on uh, several criteria. And um, absolute indication for surgery as, um, are as follows. A positive cytology for malignant or high-grade dysplasia, the presence of jaundice or solid mass, an enhanced mural nodules over 5 mm, or a main pancreatic duct dilation over 10 mm. The second type is the serocystic neoplasm, 20% uh, of the pancreatic cyst. It affects female around 60 to 70 per uh, year. Yes. It is located everywhere in the pancreas, a little bit more in the head. We can uh, see a central calcification uh, on a CT scan without contrast. It is due to the long staging uh, nature of the lesion. The main type is the macrocystic type uh, due to numerous cysts inside the lesion. And it gives the very specific aspect of um, onecomb uh, on EUS. There is no communication with the pancreatic duct and no dilation of the duct. It is a, a benign lesion and it remains so. But 
sometimes the serous cyst is associated with a main pancreatic duct in 10% of cases and associated with branch duct IPMN in 15% of cases. So it can be very difficult to distinguish a serous uh, cyst from another thing. In this example, it seems there is a communication, but in fact, it was a serous cyst. And sometimes the serous cyst um, it looks, looks like a, a macrocyst in the body and tail, so it can give the impression it's another thing. Um, here is two examples. It looks uh, similar, but in fact, it was this one was a serous cyst, and this one was another um, type. Um, so when it's difficult to have a, a diagnostic um, diagnosis, we perform a biopsy with the EUS. And this other type was a mycinous uh, cystic neoplasm. The MCN represents 7% of the pancreatic lesion. Um, they affect female uh, around 40 to 60 years old. They are located on the body and the tail. And they, they have a true wall cyst with a brief and moderate parietal contrast enhancement, sometimes peripheral calcification, uh, no communication with the main pancreatic duct. In histology, this is a mucinous lesion with a risk of malignancy uh, the, um, can reach 30% uh, uh, um, after five years of progression. In particular, if the lesion is over four, four centimeters with an irregular thick wall or peripheral calcification. And in those cases, we have to uh, operate the patient when it's possible. The last type is the solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm. Uh, it uh, affects, uh, it is 2% uh, of the pancreatic cysts uh, for uh, young uh, women mainly. Um, they are located in the body and tail and they have uh, everything, uh, 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 mural nodule, peripheral calcification and solid component. It is a, a malignant lesion, uh, that's why we uh, always operate the patient and the prognosis is very good on condition that uh, there is no biopsy before the surgery, otherwise um, we can have a metastasis because of the parietal rupture. Cystic neuroendocrine tumors are rare, um, after 50 years old mainly. It needs um, a biopsy to, to have an accurate diagnosis and we need to operate uh, grade 3 and 2 um, neuroendocrine tumors. Sometimes we are not able to precise the diagnostic. If the lesion is uh, smaller than 15 millimeters, the better things to do is to monitor the, pa the patient. And over 15 millimeters, uh, we can perform a biopsy to have uh, the, the most uh, precise diagnosis. And if we don't know uh, the diagnosis, we can also uh, refer to an expert center. Uh, this uh, two, two more slides, uh, one uh, chart to remind you um, uh, how to manage the cystic uh, pancreatic lesion. Uh, you can find the document in gastroenterology clinical and biological. Um, it's based on the communication with the main pancreatic duct, the, num the number of cysts, the presence of um, uh, true wall, mural nodules, etc. And finally, some take home messages about the worrisome features, uh, the presence of jaundice, a lesion over 4 cm, an enhanced mural nodules over 5 mm, a main pancreatic duct over 10 mm, or a positive cytology or the presence of tumor mass. EUS is a very good example for spatial resolution to identify pancreatic duct communication, to perform contrast and biopsy, or to detect cancer. For cirrhosis or pseudocyst, there is no surveillance and no surgery. There is always surgery uh, for solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm, and we have to decide between monitoring or 